Hi, so today I want to talk about the uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, its good part and its fatal flaws. And so by itself, the Convention on the Rights of the Child uh, was a good thing with good intentions. Uh, creating the 1980s and becoming into effect on September 2nd, 1990. The treaty stipulates the basic rights of children. Uh, it can actually be divided into certain components. The first one of which is about basic amenities like uh, food, water, shelter. The second part is about protection from things like exploitation, abuse and uh, cruel and unusual punishment. And then the third one is about uh, the liberation of children uh, and there's only a couple of rights that actually hit there. There's the uh, freedom of opinion, the freedom of sharing uh, thoughts, uh, the freedom of religion, the freedom of setting up or joining groups and the freedom of access to information and that's about it for this part. And then there's also part about the responsibility of parents in this uh, framework and keeping families together and a part about how the treaty itself works. One of the articles in this part is uh, bullshit. Uh, it is about when decision makers, parents etc deciding something for the child it should be in the best interest of the child. Now, why is this bullshit? In general it's a good idea, but who defines the best interest of the child? I think no one else can define it other than the child themselves. And there's no general definition of the best interest of the child. Uh, it's all an individual thing that cannot be set out collectively uh, by something like a government or the Committee on the Rights of the Child, which is set up with this convention. Speaking of that committee, it is totally undemocratically chosen, uh, and in general it is not about getting countries to comply with the convention. Rather, it sets up its own rules within that convention, which makes the treaty a living treaty that can be violated whenever someone thinks it is violated. A great example of this is corporal punishment. It used to never be mentioned in the CRC, but the committee said that it would fall under cruel and unusual punishment, even though very few countries had a ban on corporal punishment back when the treaty was first envisioned. I'm not an advocate for corporal punishment, but it does show how the rules are bent by a commission that is not voted by the population and that is totally undemocratic. And while we're at that point, there is another piece of bull <coughs> in this treaty. It is about how children should only be separated from the family if they are being uh, improperly taken care of by their parents. Uh, again, that is something only the child can decide. And sometimes the child can decide to get away from their parents without this being the case, i.e. the child just wants to spread their wings. And we should let them. Uh, yet the treaty, in that case, doesn't consider a child improperly taken care of, so to speak, and therefore the emplacement is unlawful according to the treaty. Uh, I think children should actually be given a right to choose where they want to live instead of just a right to live with their families. And now another point, this one is of the first part about the immunity of children and the third part, the liberation of them. They contradict each other which makes both articles a bullshit. Uh, they are about education. Uh, one says that primary education should be free and compulsory and yet the other one says that the education should help children fully develop their personalities, talents and abilities. Both cannot be combined together because a coercive aka compulsory education equals a standard curriculum. And I have talked about this in many 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 videos before, uh, I mean two at least. Why I don't like school and what I think of children. These two articles are the biggest <coughs> the United Nations ever sh**. <coughs> You can learn more about why in those uh, videos or in the blog that I've created, but in a nutshell, uh, children excel best when they decide by themselves what they want to learn, instead of that being coerced on them. 
and it even baffles me how the strategic development goals, uh, which are not in the treaty but are based of it among the treaty, mentions getting as many children as possible to school without actually talking about what's happening inside of the school. Okay, so let's relax and talk about another article that is not bullshit, but is implemented as if it were bullshit. And it is about children have a right to a habitable environment, and that is violated time and time again. Not quite directly by governments uh, doing bad things, but by big tech, oil, gas, etc. companies doing things that heat up the earth and cause pollution and everything and the government not caring about them, right? In fact, even here I already start to feel the consequences of climate change in the form of more uh, heat waves and hot days. Imagine what it would be like for children uh, who live in, say, sub saharan Africa or in some parts of Asia. <sighs> there is only one face that can explain it and you'll see it here. But meanwhile, let me tell you that climate change will also cause the sea to rise and fewer parts of the earth becoming even inhabitable in the first place. Therefore, uh, we should definitely stop climate change. This is a good thing, uh, this article, unlike the last one I talked about. Uh, so we should abide by it. We should use less energy. Not just as an individual, but as a society. And even for the climate naysayers, uh, let's talk about the local environment the child lives in. Uh, car dependency is a very common thing in several cities around the world, especially in the US, Canada and some other parts of the world, in Asia as well. And it's real called local air pollution, which in combination especially with the rising temperatures causes smog, uh, which is particularly unhealthy for vulnerable people like children. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, we shouldn't drive cars. Uh, but even when all cars were electric, uh, habitable also means safe, and cars will always remain dangerous. Even once uh, they become self driving, a single error of a programmer would mean catastrophic consequences. And therefore, we should reduce our dependency of cars wherever possible. Anyway, that's it for today. See you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.